Okay, so here's the Blade CX Jet Ranger fuselage on the Blade 200S. Uh, this will also work on the 200S RX. It's the same thing. So, somebody asked to see a video of how I actually got it on there. I got it to work. So, here it is. So, I don't have another fuselage to show how to do it with, so we'll just kind of reverse engineer this one. I'll just take it apart and then I'll show you what all I did to the actual fuselage itself. The only thing you're going to need to take apart on the helicopter is just remove the rotor blades. Okay, <clears throat> the only thing holding this part on is just a piece of clear tape that holds the fuselage together in the back. And it's a lot easier to put on than it is to get off, apparently. Okay. You gotta be really careful with these fuselages. They are extremely delicate. They're super thin and they break really easy. So you might want to have a couple of these on hand. Okay, so on there, the whole fuselage comes off in one piece. I did nothing to the actual helicopter itself except the, the canopy mounts that were here. I had to relocate them and when you remove them you have to put in screws there to hold your swash plate guide in place because the canopy mount bolts is what holds that in so basically I just moved them down and if you can see where the landing gear bolts to the frame if you lay take your canopy mount stud and lay it on the frame next to that that'll draw your center line of where this needs to go So get your good reference there. I didn't take a measurement on it to see how far back and how far forward. But you just drill a little small pilot hole and then you just screw it in. Okay, so for your fuselage, what you're gonna need to do is this one, I cut this all the way out right there, but afterwards I've discovered that you don't really have to cut it all the way out. You only need to cut out a little square section right here and that's for clearance of the servo and if you have this fuselage with a silver you can put a piece of silver monocoat trim sheet on that that kind of helps camouflage it a little bit but this is where you're going to have to sacrifice the scale looks of it if you want it to fit but i'll peel this out so you can get a reference for the location so you can see about how far forward of this lump here. This is where the push rods go on the CX. It doesn't line up with this one, but it doesn't matter. It's plenty wide for it. Nothing hits if you do it right. But I took it all the way out to almost the edge of the silver stripe. You can start small with this and kind of work your way up. And I do recommend uh, drilling a hole in each corner right here and then just connecting it with scissors rather than trying to cut it out with scissors because if you have a jagged edge or a sharp corner the plastic has a tendency to crack in that area as far as the bottom right here about where this stripe is cut it out all the way there's like a corner edge on the bottom of the fuselage so you can see where i went to the the hole where the landing gear used to plug in so you go all the way out to this corner here all the way out to the edge and then go back a little bit more even into the blue stripe and then you'll want to cut it here cut out a spot here and then to open the tail I used an exacto knife and you just lightly make small cuts don't try to cut through all at once make light cuts and just kind of work your way through the plastic and eventually to go right through. I tried doing it with scissors 
and I was able to get from here to here, but right when I got into this round area right here, it cracked and split all the way around. So just use a really sharp X-Acto knife. There's a, there's a seam right there with an edge and you can follow that edge. The horizontal stab needs to come out. You can't use it. It's gonna be in the wrong place once you get it all on there anyway. And be careful when you're cutting it out or anything. I scratched the paint on the inside of the fuselage and now it shows right there. And the little vertical fin, get rid of it. Don't try to use it. It's just gonna get in the way and look stupid if you do leave it on there. So you can see, get an idea here about how long, how far behind the the vertical fin I cut so it's almost the width of a rotor blade leave yourself a little extra and you can trim it off afterwards but trim it so that it comes just to the front of your tail motor mount and I suppose if you were really careful you could probably leave some of the top and the right hand side to kind of cover that a little bit but there's this bolt here that sticks down low and then this one up here that sticks up a little bit it just kind of gets in the way it's easier to just do it like this so as far as the new canopy mounts go directly below the original hole and put it in the silver stripe and use the same rubber grommets just directly below and in the silver stripe then when you get ready to put this on and the reason you have to cut all of this out is because you have to make the fuselage flexible if you don't cut all the bottom out then it won't be flexible enough to open it up and put it on cut it as far out to the edges as you feel comfortable doing especially in this area here and this needs to open up as well and if you don't cut this part out it's not going to flex so now you just take it spread it it goes right over the swatch plate and everything and hold the bottom open don't force it and just kind of work it on there and then you can put the grommets over to the pegs And it's on there put your rotor blades back on and I'm going to pause the video for just a second because I need to run go grab a battery okay <clears throat> my wife pointed out something that's very important that I forgot to mention so I want to pop the canopy back off real quick okay if you look at this you notice that the tail of the helicopter bends slightly up so you have to make the tail of the helicopter bend slightly up. Good thing is this is just an aluminum tail boom. It bends really easy. So you just want to grab it like this, put your thumb there, grab it here, and just start bending up on it. It bends really easy. And bend it so that you get a nice relaxed fit in there. If you don't bend it up, then it's going to make the helicopter sit crooked inside the inside of the fuselage and it's going to look really weird when it's sitting on the ground and in the air so there's that as far as this I leave the bottom part of the fuselage undone and I just pulled this together right there use a piece of clear tape trim it out on there if you want to you can pull that together you're not going to get it to go all the way together because the helicopter itself is too wide to fit inside of this fuselage the jet ranger has a narrow booty and the and the 200s has a fat booty so they just don't fit it's like a fat chick trying to wear skinny jeans it ain't gonna work so we're gonna leave that open and you can cover that with a piece of blue tape or monaco trim or whatever as far as the battery now how you want wonder how you're gonna get to the battery in there well, normally you have the full length strip of velcro and you lay it on there and you strap it down i took the velcro strap off and then i just put one little half inch square piece of velcro on the other side of the battery i can still use this in other things but now this is specific to this helicopter now you slide up through there you push it in 
until the Velcro engages at the front of the battery tray. And I have put this thing through the paces. That battery will not come out in flight. I have tried. It will not. And then you just tuck your wire underneath that. And when you set it down, you get ready, you plug it in, let it initialize and go fly. And it's really that easy. It took me a couple hours to figure this out and went through about three fuselages for I, before I came up with a good setup like this. But in reality, it would only take you about an hour to convert one of these fuselages over to fit. And I just left the stock tail on there. No, it's not scale, but it works. And the helicopter flies great with it. Keeps me from dinging my tail rotors. And it was easier than trying to come up with a scale looking fin that went on it. I did make one little plywood fin with white monocoat on it, but it just didn't look right. So I just went back with a stock tail. It still looks good. Thank you.